As we discussed last week, New Mexico ranked dead last in the child well-being and the kids count survey, but recent rankings on how much the state spends per pupil put us at either number 25 or number 37, depending on the study. Now, Public Education Secretary Designate Hannah Scandera says those disparities means it's not enough to just throw money at the problem. There has to be more accountability. And the teachers union says the high poverty rate here means the state should spend more. Now, Rob, you wrote about this issue this week and you talked to the Senator Guy Gay Kern, excuse me, she says we can't fix our, our, our problem spending more money. And in fact, last week when you were at the table here, you made a similar point. There were other issues you brought in as well. However, I'm curious if your point of view has changed with this revelation about where we rank on, on this per pupil spending. Do you f still feel like we're spending too much, too little, or are you comfortable in, in the middle as John Arthur Smith is? I, I'm not comfortable anywhere. <laughs> well, you like well, results, that's why. Right, <laughs> and that, that's precisely what I was gonna say. If, yep. if, you would, if we were 25th in spending, which we are, and roughly in the middle of the pack in results, right. then you could say, okay, we're getting what we, we roughly pay for. Mm -hmm. But we're spending, we're 25th in spending, and we're 48th, 49th, 50th, whatever right. in results. Right. That brings up the question. I'm not smart enough to know what the answer, right. the, what the uh, silver bullet is here, but I do think that uh, a reasonable, reasonable person needs to ask, mm -hmm. are, we, are we as taxpayers getting the bang we need mm -hmm. for our bucks? Now, you can make an mm -hmm. argument that because of the, our high levels of poverty, we should be spending more. Mm -hmm. But we already spend, uh, within the state budget, the, the largest chunk by far goes to education, mm -hmm. more than 50% of the budget. So mm -hmm. we are spending money, and I think that begs other questions, such as um, are parents doing enough? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think that uh, politicians might be a little loath to bring up because you're going to alienate potential voters. Sure. But I think that if you're going to talk about bringing all the parties together, mm -hmm. I think a very big party has to be parents and mm -hmm. individual responsibility. Senator, because would it's you? Not, it's, sure. it's not the responsibility of the government to raise your kid. There you go. Job. Would you agree with that, Senator? And Abs that's part of it that no, absolutely. coming together you'd like to see One as well? Yeah. The things that I truly believe, and mm -hmm. this ties to economic development in many ways, is and even going back to health care. If a family with both parents working has to choose between losing their job or buying uh, health care or going to a, a student's uh, conference, sure. they're going to stay with a job. If they have to choose between putting shoes on the child's feet mm -hmm. or $1,000 a month for family health care, they're going to put the shoes on the kid's feet. So, me, in my opinion, the, the, fir the egg there, or chicken, whichever comes first, is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people in our state have to have good paying jobs. Mm -hmm. Then it goes back to the family. The, I was very blessed, many of us, of us probably here. Mm -hmm. My mother stayed home right. until I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And she taught us all the things that, need, that came with in di the discipline. Teachers should be allowed to teach. They should not have to have all this staff. And if we're going to spend money elsewhere and increase funding, I would put it into getting the reporting away from the classroom. Let the teachers teach yeah, yeah. and have other people do all the multi-layers multi sure. of, sure. of reporting. All the stuff that keeps them in the building till five o'clock in the yes, afternoon, absolutely. exactly right. John, again, you know, the, the fundamental question here is and the endless question, are we spending enough? But now we have this other information now about where we rank. Does it, at the end of the day, does it mean anything really about where we rank compared to other states, either nationally or regionally? Inside that question, are we spending enough or not enough? Well, in my view, we're clearly not enough. Okay. I mean, there, there's been detailed uh, studies of this that the mm -hmm. legislature did a few years ago that showed uh, extreme inadequacy in funding. And so, so why would that be the case? Mm -hmm. And yet we rank in the middle on the National Education Association, who is a client of my law firms and has a long-term client. Mm -hmm. So I want to disclose sure. that. Um, um, but, but the reality is, is the need is so huge in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We are literally now at the bottom Mm -hmm. in child welfare and other lists. And why are we in child well-being at the bottom of the list most recently? Mm -hmm. And the answer is because we have poverty. We have single parent households in a very large percentage compared to the sure. rest of the country. Mm -hmm. And so in order to get an education system that works, it's going to require more money. And, and, and the, 
that is very clear. I do think that there is an important philosophical debate that is going that goes on. This is where there really is a strong difference between Republicans and Democrats, and it's an important intellectual difference. It's mm -hmm. a valid difference. Mm -hmm. The arguments that Rob and Diane are making are valid arguments, I agree. Yep. but I disagree with them fundamentally, and I disagree with them because ultimately personal responsibility of a single mom working two jobs, if she can find one, mm -hmm. is not going to educate children in New Mexico. Um, suggesting when we have the lowest job growth in the western states that that more wages is going to educate sure. our children sure and so we are at the risk of being stuck at the bottom mm -hmm. we have to remember mississippi who now is one notch above us on a lot of these lists mm -hmm. has been at the bottom of the heap since the civil war right. and i really think we're at a critical phase where we have to invest mm -hmm. especially in education mm -hmm. and stop this war on teachers the mm -hmm. idea that teachers are somehow at the root of the problem, they mm -hmm. need to be accountable, um, is just a, a fallacy in my view. Sure. You know, interesting quote from Representative Mimi Stewart. Um, she makes the point that it, it is going to cost more to bring at-risk kids up to parity, not even to get them to thrive, just getting to grade level and to parity. And that seems to me to be the big hitch here, Laura, because you know, it, when we talk about spending and how much is enough, can we not just figure out a way to get to parity at this point with other states, maybe 35th, 30th, somewhere around there, and make a number that works there? It, it, is that a viable option in your view? Or are we just so stuck politically on this that we can't, we can't see a dollar for what it is at this point? Well, I mean, I, I, I hate to think that we're just stuck and we have to just agree. We just have to, you know, this is just where we're going to be and this is our lot in life. Because mm -hmm. had I made that decision, you know, had my family made that decision, I certainly wouldn't be here. Sure. I wouldn't be an attorney. You know, Diane mentioned, and I was I'm happy that you shared with us your story about your mom staying home. I had a radically different situation, but mm -hmm. it was definitely, you know, I feel lucky in my own way. I had a single mom, Spanish-speaking, immigrant, mm -hmm. um, divorced, you know, had been uh, physically abused in a domestic mm -hmm. violence situation, mm -hmm. um, absent father, uh, eighth grade education she had. And uh, so she was, she had three different jobs, seasonal jobs, did whatever she could to put food on the table. Right. Um, I distinctly remember several of my teachers being extremely helpful in, in encouraging me to look beyond just sure. what was my lot in life and yeah. to be inspired to do a lot of that. And if it weren't for those key teachers at those, at those times, this is in the Demi public school system, <laughs> mind you. So we're not talking about, you know, I mean, these were, these were you know, really good teachers, cared sure. a lot. And I think they were extremely, extremely, you know, I thank them for everything that I have now, mm -hmm. um, where I am. And I think there's a lot of people that we, we have to, as a community, reach out to them. It isn't, right. while there's, I certainly think it's important to take personal responsibility mm -hmm. as parents, I think that as a community we have to take responsibility sure. too. And we have to stop being so top heavy in terms of the administration. I think mm -hmm. that's one big problem, mm -hmm. is, is, is school districts like APS and others, they're very top heavy. People right. at the top levels make huge amounts compared to people who are actually delivering that service of education. Mm -hmm. And we have to change that. Senator R Jonathan Smith made the point that uh, he would like to see some more efficiencies in how this, this money is being spent. And that's an interesting word to use, Rob Nikoleski, because mm -hmm. That's always the, the, the big pot of mayhem in money. Right. <laughs> it's right. inefficiently used. However, this circles right back to how we started the segment with you. Do we glean anything from this ranking of this middle of the pack deal or by Monday morning, does it just not mean anything and the argument just stays the same? Does it, does it move the needle in some capacity, this ranking? I hope so, because you know, there's that phrase, facts are stubborn things. Well, statistics are stubborn things too. Yep. And this is not a new phenomenon. In, in, in this state. Sure. We've, we've been in the lower echelon for a long, long time. Sure. And I'm open to any suggestions from anyone from the political spectrum mm -hmm. about trying to get this thing done because I know it's, a, it's a cliche, but you know, we've got to do something to get to turn the corner on this thing because, how about doing something because if radical? a kid doesn't get an education, you it's know, a one-way ticket to the underclass. That's a, that's a point, but how about something radical? How about, you, you know, the this, 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 some things we seem to do are small. They nibble at the edges. They're not a radical change. Are, are we emotionally able to do this at this point politically? Make radical changes in our system. Well, it depends what what do you mean by radical? That's a good point. I mean, I mean we, <laughs> That's a good point. we radically <laughs> spend a lot of money I think already. How about radically spend a lot more money? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know what, Gene? Mm -hmm. I think that you know, we nibble at the corners, but even those nibbles are important to make. You know, Fair just enough. last week, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, you know, in my job, I get emails from everyone. I got an email from Hannah Scandera, which mm -hmm. I kind of thought was spam at first. I didn't know what it was. But <laughs> so I don't expect to get emails from her. But it was actually an email, very interesting, about a, um, an effort in Las Cruces next month to bring together business leaders um, from across different spectrums to talk about this education problem. Okay. That kind of stakeholder 
larger outreach to to others than just who you would expect because right. I wouldn't expect to get teachers in union versus right, everybody right. else right you, you know to, to bring together bigger groups is an important step in the right direction I right. think you have to have I think a lot of different people telling you know, giving advice and and being part of the conversation it can't just be stuck in the same folks fair enough good point I'm gonna hold you there John my fault a little short on time it's yeah. a great subject you know we're gonna talk about this after we finish taping okay. you know we are now in a moment he's best known as Dr. George and he was back in the Duke City this week to be honored with a plaque on Albuquerque's brand new Wall of Fame. I sit down with George Fishbeck to talk about his early days here at KME, and that's coming up next.